Hi there everybody, my name is Bruce and welcome to lesson number four. A parallel circuit is a circuit that has two or more paths for electric current to pass through. In other words, the components are arranged in parallel with each other. Here are two light bulbs connected and paralleled with each other. Now what would happen if one of the light bulbs actually burnt out? Let me simulate this by unscrewing this light bulb. Notice that this bulb has gone out, but this bulb continues to glow brightly. That is because electric current is still able to flow through the light bulb. Now that is why the wiring in your house is connected in parallel. Let me show you what I mean. To connect your house in series would be very impractical. Have a look at this animation. If I close switch number two and switches one and three open, no lights come on. If I close switch three and open one and two, still no lights come on. But if I close all the switches, can you see now that all the lights are glowing brightly? Therefore, all the lights in the house would have to be switched on at the same time for any one of them to work. Now let's have a look at our second animation, which shows a parallel combination. If I close switch one, can you see that bulb one will start glowing? If I close switch two, then bulb two will start glowing. And if I close switch three, then bulb three will glow. If I close all three switches, then all three bulbs will glow at the same time. Therefore, the circuits in our houses are connected in parallel so that every lamp can be switched on and off separately. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to measure the current in a parallel circuit and explain the effect on current if more resistors are added to the circuit. Let's investigate current in a parallel circuit by setting up a circuit. I will use two resistors. One has a resistance of 10 ohms and the other has a resistance of 15 ohms. We will measure the current through the whole circuit as well as the current through each individual resistor. We will also measure the potential difference across the whole parallel combination. Let's see now what our circuit's going to look like. In this diagram, the resistors are placed alongside each other, that is, parallel to each other. Ammeter A1 measures the current through resistor R1, which has the lower resistance of 10 ohms, while ammeter A2 measures the current through R2, which has the high resistance of 15 ohms. AT measures the total current supplied by the battery. The voltmeter measures the total potential difference across the resistors. Let's take a quick look at our electric circuit. Here I have my two resistors in parallel. Here's R1, the 10 ohm resistor, and R2, the 15 ohm resistor. I've got my ammeter connected to measure the current that flows through R1 in the parallel combination. Let's now take the reading for the current passing through R1. If we use the top scale, we can see now that the needle is lying on 0, 0.35 amperes. Let's write that down on our table. I1 here represents the current passing through R1, and we write it down as 0, 0,35 amperes. Let's now measure the current passing through R2. Notice that the needle has settled on 0, 0,25 amperes. Let's write that back onto our table. I2, which measures the current through R2, is 0, 0,25 amperes. Now for our third current reading, which will measure the total current in the circuit. Notice that the reading is now 0, 0,6 amperes. Let's take that reading and put it onto our table. IT stands for the total current in the circuit, which was measured as 0, 0,6 amperes. Now that we've collected readings for current in the circuit, let's see what these readings actually tell us. 
Do you see that the current that passes through each branch is very different? A greater current passes through branch 1, which has a lower resistance than branch 2. The greatest current passes through the ammeter, which is measuring the current supplied by the battery of cells. Let's now add up the current that pass through branch 1 and branch 2. So if we now add up I1, which is 0.35 amperes, and I2, which is 0.25 amperes, 0.35 plus 0.25 gives us an answer of 0.6 amperes. But what do you notice? Well, I hope you can see that this value that I've just calculated is exactly the same as the current passing through the ammeter, which measures the current supplied by the battery. Therefore, the current supplied by the battery, which will be IT, is the sum of the currents of each branch. Therefore, I1 plus I2 must equal IT. Now, what can we learn from these results? Current divides up in a parallel circuit, the branch with a lower resistance carries the higher current, and the current in the main circuit, that is from the battery, is equal to the sum of the currents through the branches of the circuit. Now let's measure the potential difference across the resistors. But first, let us go back to our circuit diagram to remind us what the circuit looks like. The voltmeter will measure the potential difference across the parallel combination. I have now connected in the voltmeter to measure the potential difference across the entire parallel combination. If I close the switch and using the middle scale, I can see that my voltmeter is measuring 6 volts. Let's now write that down onto our table. The potential difference is now measured at 6 volts. The potential difference across the entire parallel combination was 6 volts. Let's see now what the potential difference will read across each resistor in the parallel combination. I will start with resistor 1. Can you see that resistor 1 is measuring 6 volts? And now for resistor 2, Can you see that the reading is also 6 volts? Do you see that the potential difference across each branch in the parallel circuit is exactly the same? This is very important, so please learn it. The potential difference across the parallel branches is the same. Now let's investigate the effect on electric current when I add more resistors in parallel to our parallel circuit. Here's our circuit board and I've added the third resistor, a 10 ohm resistor, to my circuit. I now have one, two, three resistors in parallel. Now before we take any readings, I want you to think about this. What will happen to the current in the main circuit supplied by the battery when another resistor is added in parallel? A. The current increases. B, the current decreases, or C, the current stays the same. Let's now try and answer that question by repeating our experiment, this time using all three resistors in parallel. The current through resistor 1 is 0 0.35 amperes. So in our column, I1 is 0 0.35 amperes. The current through R2 is 0 0.25 amperes. So in our table, we write down for I2, 0 0.25 amperes. The current through R3, the additional 10 ohm resistor which is connected in parallel, is 0 0.35 amperes. So for I3, we write down 0 0.35 amperes. And now to measure the total current in the circuit, our ammeter reading is 0 0.95 amperes. Therefore, for I total, we can write down 0 0.95 amperes. 
I have now connected the voltmeter across all three resistors in parallel. Let's now take the reading. Can you see now that the needle on the voltmeter has stopped on the 6 volt mark? Let's now write that into our table. Voltage is 6 volts. Now what can we learn from these readings? Well, do you see that the current through each of the parallel branches 1 and 2 remain exactly the same? But the current in the main circuit increases. Now, if we add up the currents in the three branches of the circuit, we will get an answer of 0, 0,95, which is exactly the same as the reading on the ammeter in the main circuit. The potential difference remains the same across all three branches of the parallel part of the circuit. So can you see that the battery supplies greater current the more we add resistors in parallel into our circuit? Let us now summarize what we have learned from these results. When adding a resistor to a parallel circuit, the current through each of the parallel branches remains the same, the current in the main circuit increases, the potential difference remains the same, and the battery supplies a greater current as we add more resistors in parallel. Well, I hope you enjoyed this lesson on parallel circuits. Please join me for our next lesson where we will look at the concept of resistance. Until then, thank you and goodbye.